Okay, so today we're going to discuss the transplantation. So, our transplantation could be regarded here as either solid organ transplantation or it could also have here the stem cell transplantation. Solid organ transplantation is the transplantation with your uh, different organs or body. Okay, like your cornea, like your kidney, your lungs, heart, and many others. You could also have here your stem cell transplantation. Okay, so, but here in our discussion, we'll be discussing only the solid organ transplantation. Okay, so we have here why we are having the transplantation. So, transplantation um, is uh, being done to, number one, as a replacement for your end-stage organ damage, wherein you don't have any option but to replace a damaged organ with the uh, organ coming from a donor, because again, uh, the patients suffer here with many diseases wherein the patient could no longer, or the patient's no longer able to be responsive to the different treatment. So it could not able then to be treated by having just antibiotic treatment or many other drug treatment or other therapy. But you don't have, with that, you don't have any option but to transplant that organ, a healthy organ from the donor to your recipient in order for that to correct here for some of your different diseases. So second one we have here for the treatment of different autoimmune disorders and the third one for immune deficiencies, especially for your stem cell for your bone marrow transplantation. Okay, then we have here different factors that we need to consider for a successful uh, transplantation. The first one we have here the major histocompatibility complex. So your major histocompatibility complex includes here the class 1 and class 2. But the class 1 that could be found here in the okay, in all nucleated cells in our body and majority of that will be found here in our lymphocytes. Exception for that, the MSA class 1 is not being expressed by the following cells. So we have here your hepatocytes, keratinocytes, hepatocyte, neuronal cells, neural cells, your sperm cells, and we have also your muscle cells. So those are the cells or tissue in our body where they don't express MSA class 1. And therefore, HLA typing for your class 1 is not a requirement for those type of uh, organ or tissue transplantation. Okay, then we have your MSA class 1 includes your HLA A, HLA B, and HLA C. And among this one, so HLA A will be found here in the highest concentration. And therefore, it becomes a major consideration for the compatibility between the donor and the recipient. Second one, we have here the MSA class 2. So this is confined in all APs in our APC or your antigen presenting cells in our body. So your HLA or MC class 2 includes your HLA B, that's your D, P, D, Q, and your D, R, <clears throat> of which the highest concentration of that could be found here or is being expressed by your HLA D, R. So for the compatibility between the donor and recipient, then you need to consider here that your donor and recipient should be matched with their HLA D, R because at one is highly immunogenic compared with your other MSC class 2. Okay, the next one we have here your minor um, minor <coughs> histocompatibility antigen. So these are non-HLA proteins that exhibit polymorphism in amino acid sequence. Most likely this one is encoded in the X-link or even your autosomal. Um, this minor histocompatibility complex here, although this one is um, would only have here a minor effect with the transplantation. But then again, it could still contribute to the rejection process, especially if the donor recipient are not compatible with their minor histocompatibility complex. And most likely this one would have a slower pace of uh, rejection process compared to your major histocompatibility complex. <clears throat> so here there are some studies here that this eventually introduction of this minor histocompatibility with your um, which is different from the donor recipient, try to induce an immune response. Okay, if they are eventually different or not compatible with the donor recipient. And therefore, we could say here that the minor histocompatibility complex try also to contribute here for the success of your transplantation. Sample of this one are of your minor. We have here the proteins encoded by male Y chromosomes, proteins which are which the recipient would have a homozygous gene deletion proteins which are autosomally encoded, and proteins which are mitochondrial DNA encoded. 
Another consideration here for the success of transplantation would be the MICA or your MHC class 1 related chain A uh, protein. So this uh, MICA antigen has actually been expressed here on other cells that are It's not expressed in your T lymphocyte or even your B lymphocytes, but rather being expressed here in your uh, fibroblasts, in your endothelial cells, keratinocyte, epithelial cells, dendritic cells, and we have also here the monocytes. So this is responsible here for the delta gamma uh, T cell rejection process. Okay, another consideration for the success of your transplantation between your donor recipient would be the ABO blood group antigens. So this is highly immunogenic antigens. So our rule here for compatible between a donor recipient in such way in such a way that the donor should not have an antibody, an ABO blood group antibody directed towards your I mean your recipient should have don't have here the corresponding antibody directed towards here the donor's red cell antigen. So always try to check if the donor has what is uh, the antibody in the donor and that would be eventually should be lacking on the, I mean, um, <clears throat> the recipient, what would be the antibody on the recipient and then it should be lacking here on the receipt in the donor in order for, in the corresponding antigen should be lacking on the donor in order for you to have here as compatible between a donor recipient. Okay, so incompatibility here related to your AB antigens will try to be a uh, result here to your type 2 hypersensitivity reaction with the binding of your antigen antibody complex and your red cells and that, that would also try to activate your complement and then damage related to your red cell would be because of your complement related reaction. And another consideration would be the presence of the key IR or your killer immunoglobulin like receptor. So this receptor, the key IR receptor, is being used by your natural killer in order for that to recognize between your self and non self. Okay, so remember that the NK try to use here the different receptors. So it could have here the activatory receptor or inhibitory receptor. So inhibitory receptor, receptor recognized by the NK as that that cell is being part of your body or that cell is your self-antigen. So we could identify that one as the self-antigen and it will not kill by your NK if that possesses here inhibitory receptor. Example of the inhibitory receptor with the KIR is one. Another one, the cell should possess also here the MC class one for that to be considered here as self-antigen or your, um, your, your self, uh, your self cell. On the other hand, if the cell here do not express MSA class 1, then that become here um, an activatory receptor that would activate the cytotoxic activity of the NK. And therefore, the NK we're going to kill that one. So once the NK needs to identify here to recognize is that that cell possess here inhibitory receptor to prevent the cytotoxic activity of your NK. Okay, then we have here the different type of the transplantation. So first one, we have here the autograph. So autograph is just a transplantation where you're just transferring a tissue in one part of your body and transfer it to other part of your body. Uh, same individual. So example for that, you could transplant your autograph here by your skin, your, your hair, or even your bones. Another one, we have the scene graph or syngenic. So this is just transplantation here between... Um, uh, individual of the same species uh, between two different but identical recipients so that's the transplantation between your homogeneous or your I mean your your among your twins third one we have here the allograph or your homograph is a transplantation between an individual of the same species so we're talking about human to human transplantation so that's your allograph and the cenograph is a transplantation here between uh, of the tissues organ between um, individual of different species. We're talking about an animal being transplanted or animal tissues transplanted to the human. So that's become here your xenograph. So as to their uh, immunogenicity and their degree of the foreignness, so this one would be arranged here. So this is less foreign, this is more foreign. So higher chance of the rejection here compared to your autograph. Okay, then we have here the mechanism of our rejection process or the allo recognition that would 
um, ability of our immune system here to recognize that one is a foreign or not part of your body, leading to your rejection process. The first one is direct allo recognition. So that is being um, detected directly and acted directly here by our cytotoxic T cell. There will be incompatibility between the donor recipient in terms of their grafted and tissues. Then we have here the indirect uh, allo recognition where the grafted tissue is being uh, rejected by the host, basically here by the process of um, antigen processing presentation. So it start here with the recognition that one is a foreign, then undergo phagocytosis, then presentation of the antigen to your uh, cytotoxic T or even your T helper for the eventual uh, uh, rejection process. Okay, we have here the effect of response. So what's going to happen here for if you have your incompatibility, the first one, direct to your cytotoxicity mediated by your T cytotoxic, leading to destruction of your grafted tissues, which is considered to be incompatible between the donor recipient. Second one, it might be in a form delayed hypersensitivity reaction. Third one could be the binding of your antigen antibody complex because of the allo recognition, because of the incompatibility between the donor recipient. And then it would also activate your complement and also here to your tissue destruction. Okay, then we have here the classification of your graph rejections. So we have here the hyperacute. Hyperacute usually occurs here minutes, within minutes after the transplantation. So this is humoral mediated because the preformed antibody present already in the donors. It's directed towards the antigen on your recipient. I mean, at, um, because the preformed antibody found in the recipient that's directed towards here the donor's antigen. Next, we have here the accelerated occurring here two to five days within or after the transplantation. And what mediates the uh, rejection process here would be this is a cell mediated immunity due to your previous sensitization to your donor antigen. Then we have also here the acute occurring seven to 21 days after the transplantation. And that's, um, this is also cell-mediated immunity, but it could also be antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. And this is due to the development of your allogenic reaction to your donors. Then chronic occurring here after three months after the transplantation. And it's also due to your cell-mediated immunity because of the disturbance in your host graft uh, tolerance. And lastly, we have your immunopathologic damage to your transplanted tissues that also may occur here after three months. And of the transplantation, this due to your formation of your immune complex to your directed towards your soluble antigens. And this is because of the immunologic mechanism here, we try to necessitate your transplantation. Okay, then we have here the hyperacute. Uh, rejection process. So this one occur here minutes after the transplantation because again, the recipient would have already the um, antibody directed towards here the ABO or even the HLA antigen from your donor. So that's why automatic, very uh, fast ang kanyang rejection process. Okay, this is associated here with the production of your ischemia or decreased blood flow with your tissue necrosis and that would activate the complement at the same time, also try then to activate your coagulation factors This eventually result here to the clotting process. So the patient would have the thrombosis because of that. Okay, so this is seldom encountered. It's because here again, before the patient the recipient has been uh, undergone here uh, transplantation. Okay, then it undergo first here the screening for both the donor and the recipient to check for their uh, APO and even their HLE for both their antigen and antibody in order for you to find here a possible match between them. So therefore, this is not most likely is being prevented from happening because of that strict na criteria for the um, for the screening of the donor recipient. Okay, the next one we have here the acute rejection. So acute rejection occurring here 7 to 21 days after your transplantation. So it would have resembled here the same manifestation as with our um, accelerate, our hyperacute. Okay, this one is mediated here by the activation of your CD4, CD8, and even your macrophages. This is characterized by the process or the presence of your necrosis and the inflammation, but you don't have here the thrombosis that's happening in your hyperacute.
Okay, then we have here the chronic rejection process. So this is occurring here more than three months after the transplantation process. And the chronic uh, rejection process is characterized here by arteriosclerosis or the narrowing down of your blood vessel wall or the lumen of that because of the scarring, the fibrosis, because of the proliferation, the smooth muscle, so lumilinit ang butas niya, which eventually result here to some effects. Okay, so we have here the predisposing factors. So we have here called ischemia, we have also reperfusion, acute um, rejection episodes, and later on, nagkakaroon din siya ng damage, only that later on, because of the um, acute toxicity here related to the treatment of your immunosuppressive drugs. The patient, uh, time as the time goes on here, the patient would, uh, as the effect of its treatment process, it become toxic to the body of the patient until such time that the patient were going to reject the transplanted tissue, only that it will have here occurring after three months. Making this one, or more than three months, making this one as your chronic rejection process.